Okay, it's time for some real education. We've looked at this uh, one of these poems before, and I want to bring another one back in this time of confusion and uh, moral turpitude, this place where we seem as a, to a culture, as a republic, uh, tottering on the brink of becoming something much different. Uh, a Return to God, the Holy Sonnets. Uh, they're, sh they're short poems written by John Donne. They're also called Divine Meditations, 19 poems by the English poet John Donne, who was born in 1572, died in 1631. He was a contemporary of Shakespeare's. The sonnets were first published in 1630. 33, two years after Dunn's death. And this is really, a, they're, they're, they remind us of what's powerful and important. These are sonnets, and as sonnets there, they have 14 lines, a certain particular rhyme scheme. They actually take a, a, an idea or a thesis, and they develop it over the course of the poem. And here's where Dunn begins. I am a little world made cunningly of elements and an angelic sprite. Just have those two lines. What, what is a human being? In, in the, at the end of the day, what are we? I am a little world. I am a little microcosm. The, the Renaissance writers believed that everything that was in the universe could be found in the body of man. There is, there is hot and cold. There is wet and dry. That, that the human animal was in many regards the epitome, the miniature of what was in everything that God had created. I am a little world. There's a, there's a world inside of me made cunningly by the creator. And what was it made out of? Of the elements, the four elements, right? Air, earth, water, and fire. And an angelic spirit, that's exactly right. The materialists of today would have you believe, the materialist universities today would have you believe that human beings are nothing more than highly evolved animals. We're just smart animals. There's nothing transcendent about us or unique about us, like any other animal, despite our intelligence. When we lay down and die, that's the end. The, the burdocks grow over our grave, and that's the end of us. All of our love, our memory, our experience goes away. But this is the more powerful argument. In fact, a lot of the problems we have today is teaching kids that they are nothing but little material creatures, little animals, because then we adopt the animals, the mores, the morality of the animals, which is to say no morality. Go back again. I am a little world made cunningly. Of elements, sure, part human, but also I have the soul of an angel. What a difference that makes. But black sin hath betrayed to endless night. My worlds, both parts, I have corrupted my soul. I have corrupted my body by black sin. And oh, both parts must die. That's the curse, right? The wages of sin are death. By the way, what are the wages of sin if there is no God? If there is no God and you're just an animal, what are the wages? What is the cost of sin when you die? Well, if there is no such thing as God, the modern world has concluded, well, there's probably no such thing as sin either. But black sin hath betrayed to endless night my world's both parts. And oh, both parts must die. You, which beyond that heaven, you, God, which was most high, you have found new spheres and of new lands can write. I beg you, God, pour new seas into mine eyes so that I might drown my corrupted world with my weeping earnestly or wash it, wash it clean if it must be drowned no more. And that comes right from the Psalms, doesn't it? Right? Give me, the, you know, drown my, purge my sin with hyssop. Wash me clean. How often do the Psalms focus on that? And these holy sonnets, are there really Psalms for the, the Christian world begging God to unmake in us what we have made weak or sinful or sick and to powerfully change it. Look at the conclusion of the poem. But oh no, we know that the, when Christ comes again, it will be in fire, not in water. But oh, it must be burnt, right? Burnt, sonnet, uh, Psalm 50, burnt and purged away our sin. But oh, it must be burnt. Alas, the fire of lust and envy have burnt it heretofore. The heat of sin the heat of lust has pulled me from the goodness of God and made me fouler. Let these flames retire, Lord, but you burn me, O Lord, with a fiery zeal of thee in thy house, which doth in eating, with doth, with doth in consuming heal, right? Rather than to pull us from the heat of lusts and replace that heat with the, furgi the purging fire, right? The same thing all those thousands of years ago David was calling for in the Psalms, done in the 1620s was calling for in regards to our relationship with God as well.